Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to today's Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy. Uh, as usual, Nigel and Bayek here. Um, I'm also here with Nathan. So, Hello, everyone. Hey, Nathan. Um, today we're going to be doing something pretty great, uh, factory design utilities. Uh, some of you might ask why. Um, one of the big reasons for this was uh, because if you have seen our previous webcast about the industry collections, um, the product collection does include factory design utilities. Um, which is something that you didn't necessarily get when you did have your product design suites. And I know a lot of the customers on this call um, do have that. And then Nathan will go, in that to go into that a little bit more. Um, I'd like to just go over a couple of things. Uh, we're at over 1,500 subscribers, which is really awesome. So thank you all for supporting us and coming back every week. Uh, definitely not possible without uh, all of you coming back uh, on a consistent basis. And uh, as usual, if you do have any questions during this webinar, go ahead and uh, type them into the questions pane that you have in your panel, uh, we'll make sure to cover those at the end of the session or uh, even during if that question um, requires that. So uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Nathan over here and uh, we'll get going. All right, thank you very much, Nigel. So today I'm excited to be here to uh, talk with all of you about the factory design utilities. Uh, what I wanna cover is I wanna give an introductory overview so if you've never used Factory Design Suite before or seen the Factory Design Utilities, uh, this webinar really is for you. Um, what we want to review today are a lot of the Factory Design workflows inside of AutoCAD and Inventor. Um, if you have the Factory Design Utilities installed, you get some extra toolbars and some extra functions inside each of those applications, and they talk to each other a whole lot better. So I'm going to go over how that works. Um, and then going along with that, that will help you understand how your 2D drawings in AutoCAD and your 3D models inside Inventor can be synchronized. Um, and then at the end, uh, we're going to talk about the backbone of Factory Design Suite, which are the library assets. You know, assets are any objects you have on your factory floor. It could be machines, conveyors, storage racks, bins. It could be any number of objects that you have out in your factory. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can create your own custom library assets. Now, as Nigel said earlier, uh, last week in the ABA session, we talked about the upcoming industry collections. So at the end of this month, Autodesk is no, or you're not going to be able to purchase any new licenses of any of the design suites. And they're going to be replaced with what we call the industry collections. Now, the industry collection for manufacturing includes the factory design utilities, which you can see highlighted on this slide. And you know you may not know what that really means, and that's really going to be the core of my presentation today, is helping you understand what those factory design utilities are. Now, today, probably more than 80% of customers out there, when they want to document their factory floor, if they want to uh, make a new layout for a proposed factory floor or machine shop floor, or, you know, wherever they, they make their product, they use AutoCAD. And the reason they use AutoCAD is because it's easy to use, it's easy to learn. There are millions of engineers out there today that already know and love using AutoCAD. So it's, it's very easy to lay out your space, very great tool to do your layouts. However, in 2D, uh, sometimes it doesn't always accurately represent reality. Um, in other words, when you're laying out objects in 2D space, if objects are on top of each other, you can't really tell if there's going to be interference or not. Um, in addition, a lot of times, if we have stakeholders that need to approve these projects, they may not know how to really look at a plan view of a factory and understand exactly what they're looking at. You know, when we think of a factory, we think of the picture that you see in front of you. Uh, the first picture in your mind probably isn't a 2D schematic of how everything is laid out. And so that's why the ultimate goal would be to get the best of both worlds. You know, make it as easy as designing an AutoCAD where you can quickly bring in your different assets and your different objects, lay them out the way that you want, but also have the ability to quickly look at that in 3D so that you can sell your projects, you can help your stakeholders understand what you're proposing or what you're documenting. And that's the great thing about the factory design utilities is that it really does give you the best of both worlds. Uh, we can combine 2D and 3D in these seamless workflows, and, and really that's what we're going to uh, look at in our demonstration today. 
Now, one of the first things I wanted to know, um, you'll notice that I'm going to bring up AutoCAD architecture. Uh, that's what I'm going to be using to show you the AutoCAD capabilities today. But the design utilities work in AutoCAD architecture, in AutoCAD mechanical, or in the base version of AutoCAD. So if you have any of those three, you can when you install the factory design utilities, um, you're going to see some extra capabilities. Now, one of the reasons that I prefer to do this with AutoCAD architecture is that if you're laying out a factory floor, you know, you're going to have walls, you're going to have windows, you're going to have doors, and AutoCAD architecture makes it really easy with purpose-built tools to define your walls, to define doors. Um, you know, here maybe I want to go ahead and add a window. So uh, it brings up these toolbars. Sorry, I have this on my second screen here. Let me drag this in. So we have these toolbars that come up and make it really easy to place these kind of objects. So you can see that um, we have all of these different styles that you can use, that you can choose between. And you can also dynamically choose the different sizes that you want to make your, your objects. So here I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add a few windows. You see how it's very easy for me just to come in, choose where I want to place a few of these windows. And, and so that's one of the reasons why I personally prefer AutoCAD architecture. But again, you can use any of the supported formats and uh, these utilities will work just fine. So let me just go ahead and change these to the right layer. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start looking at some of the more factory design utility specific capabilities. So notice that when I have the factory design utilities installed, I get this extra factory tab right here. And this extra factory tab uh, gives me some capabilities. Now what we want to do objectively here is I have a, a sample of a factory layout. Uh, we have a receiving area right here. Uh, we have some uh, an area right here where we can process sheet metal. So I have a CNC laser cutter. I'm going to put a couple of shears in here. Um, and then we're going to put in a robotic welding station right here as well. So that's going to be kind of our objective as we look at the AutoCAD portion of this right now. Now the core, as I mentioned, really is all about the assets. And when you install the factory design utilities, you get this, this factory asset browser. And this is really the library of all the different objects or what we call assets that you can place inside of your layout. Now this is set up in a folder structure. So if I want and I know exactly what I'm looking for, I know where it is, I can navigate there and I can you know, quickly go down until I, I find the asset that I'm looking for. Now I want to point out that uh, you'll notice that some of these assets have a blank circle in the top right corner. Um, what that means is that those are available on the cloud and if I want to use it, I can right click and say download asset. Out of the box, when you install factory design utilities, there are some assets that it will install locally, uh, but the thousands that are out there that you can choose from, a lot of them are in the cloud and are readily downloadable when you need them. If I have them and they're available to put inside of my layout, um, I'll have this circle shaded green with a little check box in it. Now also, if I want to get a little preview of what I'm looking at here, um, notice that we can look at the preview. Um, this allows me to ensure that I'm getting the right asset when I place it into my, my layout. So no further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring this into our, our layout here. Um, notice that, again, I'm just using standard AutoCAD tools here. Um, these are really just like blocks that I'm placing. And I can use my standard AutoCAD commands like move. Um, I can go ahead and select these and I can put them in any layer that I want. So, so again, these are the same workflows that I'm used to on a day-in, day-out basis with AutoCAD. Um, the difference is now that I have this great library that's readily accessible that I can quickly bring objects that I want into my factory layout. Now, the other important thing to notice about the factory design utilities is that it also gives me this factory properties browser. Now this isn't like looking at attributes and blocks. Um, this has more information 
that can actually control the blocks. And I'm going to show you how that works here. Just so notice, if I select a factory asset, it's going to give me model parameter information. And, and when I create assets, I can control what information I want it to show right here. Um, and then it's also going to give me some summary project, you know, different types of meta metadata that I might want the user to know. Now, if I pick this rack right here, um, you can see that this rack, we made it a little bit too long. It extends through a wall into our stairwell, and it goes past this guardrail that we had set up. So we, we don't want it to do that. So notice that I have all of this property information about this that's exposed to me right here in my factory properties box. Um, if I count here, I have one, two, three, four, five. You can see I have five columns here. And so what I can do is you know, either I can adjust these different sizes of the spans, the depths, the heights, and so forth, or I can just change my number of columns. And what factory design utilities do is it goes and actually updates my block so that now it represents what my design is. And that's really the power here is that you know, this isn't just showing me information about the block, but it's actually letting me also control information about the block. Um, to give you a better idea of how that works, I'm going to uh, go ahead. There's a custom asset that I've created earlier. It's the robotic cell. Um, before I showed you how in the asset browser you can you know, navigate to wherever you have the asset, um, as you start using Factory Design Suite, you'll find that it's actually much easier just to use the search toolbar. So here I can type in the keywords robot weld, and sure enough, my robot welding center, it comes up. And I can then again just drag and drop it right into my AutoCAD layout and, and place it right where I need to. Now, when I created this asset, the only thing I wanted to allow the user to change is I wanted them to be able to determine how many different stations that they needed in this robot welding cell. So right here, uh, you know, maybe for the job that we're working on, we don't need four robots. We only need three. So I can change that to three. And again, it automatically goes back to all my information about that asset, and it replaces my block to accurately represent um, how I need this laid out. Now, I also wanted to point out that uh, down here in this lower corner, I have this is just a standard block. So if I select that, it's not going to show any information over here, and that's because it's not a factory asset. And so this really is only going to display properties and information and allow me to control those assets that are part of my factory library. So one of the other common tasks that we have to perform when laying out a factory is we need conveying systems. Now you can see right now I have this set up where you know, we palletize these uh, sheet metal parts that we process, and then we have a forklift that carries it back and forth. But let's say I wanted to do a what-if scenario, and I wanted to see what this would look like if we instead used a conveying system. So I'm going to go ahead and search for our conveyor parts that we have inside of our, our library, and there are a whole lot that are available. And when I bring it in, you're going to notice something that I'm going to zoom in and show you. So notice that we have these green dots. Um, those in factory design utilities is what we call connectors. Now notice that if I, as I get close, it snaps in place. And when it snaps in place, that means that it's actually connecting these different pieces together. So if I want to, I can control how it puts together my line, in this case, of conveyors that I want to put together. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to complete this with a few straight conveyors. And, and what's more about those connectors is that because that's connected as one solid piece, if I pick any of these portions of it, and if I move it around to kind of relocate it a little bit, all of the other pieces are going to follow suit with it. And that's because they're really connected together as a chain. Now, you can see that was really fast to lay out the, the conveyor system using those, those snaps or those connectors that I was, that I was showing you. Um, there's even a faster way. If you have a, these huge factories where you have you know, 
uh, conveyors that are really long or you have safety fences that are really long that you have to put together. Um, there's even a faster way rather than trying to put that together piece by piece. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that to you by building a safety fence. Now I could build it the same way that you saw me build my that, uh, that conveyor system. I could come in here and I could snap these together using those connectors. But you can see right here that we have this little chain symbol. And as I hover over the asset, it shows me that it's a chain asset. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that what I can do is basically instead of placing it piece by piece, I can just come in and I can start drawing these polylines. And I can start defining how I want it to put together my, my system. Now, what's great about this is that Factory Design Utilities has a way, it has algorithms where it will automatically go in here and it will fit all of the individual pieces according to how I have these polylines laid out. So basically what I'm really doing is I'm defining a path and then later factory design utilities are going to go in and replace this path with these individual pieces that I would have to place manually otherwise. And you're going to see that in just a minute. So now we have this laid out. I want to show how this interacts with Inventor. Um, one quick note, um, if you're familiar with Inventor, um, if you go back and forth between AutoCAD and Inventor, which factory design utilities are designed to do, um, if you go to the options screen inside of AutoCAD, um, when, you when you install the factory design utilities, you get a few extra tabs with different options. And one of the things that you'll want to do is you will want to make sure that you have the project file in Inventor um, set right here inside of your AutoCAD instance. And that will make sure that when you communicate back and forth between the two applications, all of the files are right where they need to be. And uh, it's really just a best practice to make sure that you have that project file set. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually give me just a second here. I'm going to pull my inventor onto the screen so you can see it as it's processing here. And notice that as soon as I click this sync to inventor, it's going to automatically launch Inventor and it's going to start replacing all of those 2D assets that you saw inside of my AutoCAD view and it's going to start populating those in my 3D Inventor space. Now if I were to do this manually, you know, if I had this existing 2D layout that I had today and I wanted to create a 3D version of it, I would have to bring that into Inventor. I have to lay it out on the ground floor as an overlay. And then I'd have to bring in all of these different assets or objects one by one and attach them um, using that template where they belong. And to do something like that would you know, take hours at a minimum, maybe even days, uh, depending on how many different objects were on my factory and you know, how detailed I needed to make that. And so with these factory design utilities, I'm able to do all of that automatically simply by um, hitting those synchronized buttons between AutoCAD and Inventor. So again, we're getting the best of both worlds. So you can see in just a couple minutes, it took that 2D layout that I had and you know, it put my machines where I just recently placed them. It put my cell configured exactly the way I, I wanted it. Um, if you remember, we just drew polylines here to show where we wanted these safety fences. And uh, factory design utilities were smart enough to figure out all the different pieces that it needed to make up that safety fence. So there's a lot of um, automation that's going on there to make the workflow between 2D and 3D as quick as possible. Now, we also have layer information. So uh, for example, if I want to hide my machines, um, I can do that very quickly by using all of this layer information um, inside uh, that, that, we, that came over from AutoCAD. In addition, let's say I want to work on a cell and I want to hide some of this AutoCAD information. 
Um, you can see that when I use AutoCAD architecture, it brings an outline of my building, my windows, and everything um, so that I can design in context. But if for some reason I don't want that, I can go in and uh, when I click on my layer settings, I can come in and, for example, I can turn off my building layer if I want, and it will go ahead and it will hide all of that and get it out of the way so that I can more easily do my work. So there's a lot of um, connections between the two software that, that really make it quick and easy to do our work. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to, um, we want to move our robots over a little bit, our cell, so that we can add the robot controllers right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over just a tad bit right there. And then, just like we had inside of AutoCAD, notice that I also have my asset browser inside of Inventor. And it's the exact same asset browser that I had before. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and look up my robot control, bring that in. And you'll see, again, it's just drag and drop. So I just drag it from my library into my uh, Inventor file here. Um, as it places it, it gives me some options on how I want to orient it. So here I can say, you know, let's move it 180 degrees so that the person stands and controls the robots from, from the side over here. Um, and then if I want, I can, you know, place multiple of these just like I did inside of AutoCAD. Um, I can also take advantage of some of the tools that we have inside of Inventor. So here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a quick pattern. And, you know, pattern is similar also to what you would do inside of AutoCAD. And all I have to do is choose the direction that I want to pattern it in, how many patterns I want to create in the distance. And so you can see how it's very quick. And even though I began by creating this layout in 2D, I can continue working on it in 3D. So this is a really compelling workflow because I can go back and forth between 2D and 3D as I see fit to get my job done. Now, I also wanted to point out that with the factory tools, um, we have these different snap options, and one of them is snap to our DWG underlay. So if I wanted to replace this standard block that I had created earlier with an actual 3D file of my workbench, I could go in here and I can very quickly and easily do that. I think I misspelled it there. Um, so here's my workbench. Notice that if I zoom in a little bit here, as I go across that middle, I can use my underlay to place my assets precisely where I want them to go. So just like that, in 3D, I was able to replace that block with an actual 3D model. Now I also want to add some bins over here so that we can have some storage space. But let's say I don't have that bin inside of my, my library today. You know, how can I produce that? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my bins model. And you know, we can create assets for models that are natively built inside of Inventor. Um, if I have some assets from another system, you know, maybe they were made in SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, uh, NX, some other application, I can also bring those into Inventor and create assets from those as well. Now, just so you understand some of the functionality that we have with our model right here, um, if we look at some of these parameters, I have this set up to where we can, uh, on the fly, decide, you know, how many rows do we have, um, how many columns do we have. And so you see that we have a few different options that I can control the way that I've set this up. So once I have my model created the way that I want, and, you know, if you need more information on that, there are plenty of modeling courses that we have available. To put this in my library, we go to what's called our asset browser. Uh, and so what this allows me to do is this allows me to, first of all, define a landing surface. Now, a landing surface is basically the surface that attaches to the ground. So when I place this, this is my surface that's always going to be on the ground. Now notice it also selected an insertion point in the middle. I'm okay with that, so I can just leave that. But if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could define a dish. I could either change the insertion point 
where I could define additional insertion points also. Now, if you remember when I was placing those uh, conveyor pieces together, when I was forming my conveyor system, we had those little connectors that allowed me to snap them together. And that's what we call connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple connectors so that we can quickly um, build, put adjacent bin racks together. When I do that, all I have to do is select a point where I want the connector to be. Um, this red always points outward from my part, and the blue should be my up direction. So here I'm going to click on my blue. I'm going to redefine it to be my up direction. And literally with just a few clicks, you can create these connectors that allow me to string a whole bunch of these bins together. So I'm going to go on the other side. I'm going to notice it defines where that midpoint is for me automatically. Again, we want to define what our up direction is. And notice that if it points the wrong direction, I can just right click and say flip it. And uh, it'll quickly change it back to my up direction. So again, very quick and easy to go in there and to define how I want these assets to chain or be put together. Now, I don't have to put connectors. That's completely optional. But if I want them, then that's the process to do that. Um, these others are more advanced. You know, if you're interested, we have other classes that you can attend that, that we can go over more of the, the more advanced information. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and publish this. And so when I publish it, this is the process that now puts it inside of my library. So when I come in here, it's going to give me um, different locations where I can go and I can put it. I'm going to go ahead and put it inside of my user assets. And as soon as I click OK, it's going to take that 3D model and put it in my library. But it's also going to take a 2D snapshot of the, the plan view or the top view that it's going to make available for when I lay this out inside of AutoCAD. So that's how the two know how they correspond together. And that's basically how Inventor and AutoCAD are able to work in tandem to help me design and lay out my factory. So now when I go back, I can, um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my top view here. Notice that now my storage bin is available for me. So I can go ahead, I can place it. I'm just going to put it out in the middle for right now. And let me zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. And you can see it's, it's backwards, so I want to go ahead and I want to move that around 180 degrees. And then because we added those connectors, now if I want to add adjacent ones, I can do that by, by pulling these in together. And you can see that now they just snap real quickly together. Um, in addition to that, if I wanted to, I could independently control. So remember in AutoCAD, we looked at the factory properties. We also have access to those same factory properties right here inside of Inventor. So if I wanted to change just the outer two from four bins high to six bins high, I can do that and update um, those assets right here. So again, a lot of powerful, a lot of flexibility that really lets me set up the factory the way that I want it to be set up. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in place. And then in just a minute, we're going to show how this now updates what I have inside of AutoCAD. So I'll just go ahead and put that back in the corner. Um, so now you can see inside of Inventor, we took what we had started in AutoCAD. We moved this this uh, table a little bit, our, our welding cell, we added these controllers and we added some 3D content in our corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now notice that um, I have the ability to synchronize with AutoCAD. Just like in AutoCAD, I had the ability to synchronize with Inventor. So when I click that now, it's going to automatically detect all the different changes that happened from when I brought this in. And then it's going to update my 2D AutoCAD drawing that we had in AutoCAD architecture. Now, also, the next time I open that drawing in AutoCAD architecture, if it hasn't been updated, it's smart enough to know that updates and changes have been made. And it will also give you the option to update there as well. So there are a couple different ways that we can do this update. But the key is that once you update it, 
Um, it's, we're going to go ahead and open it up inside of AutoCAD architecture, and uh, you're going to notice all of the changes made that we just went through. So here's AutoCAD architecture. So again, here you can see we've moved this over. Um, you can see inside of AutoCAD we now have the, the different um, robot controllers that are showing. Uh, we have the actual representation of our workbench, and we show these bins, storage bins, that we just placed as well. So So to cover what we've summarize what we've learned, um, you know, really today I wanted to show how the factory design utilities can really make the factory layout process simple. You know, if you're used to working in your 2D AutoCAD, great, continue working in 2D AutoCAD, but get the 3D representation for free while you're at it. And that's where we can you can see how easy it is to create that 3D representation directly from your 2D AutoCAD layout. Um, you also saw how um, we have the ability to keep the 2D and the 3D in sync, so whatever changes I make to one system, I can quickly uh, make sure get updated in the other system. And you know the, the assets are really the backbone of factory design utilities. Um, that's where all the intelligence is, that's where all the information is. That allows me to very quickly lay out my factory. And so you saw how we're able to take the custom assets that we create and author them and publish them inside of our library so that we can use them uh, both in Inventor and inside of AutoCAD. Um, as far as recommended next steps, you know, again, there are a lot of capabilities with our factory design utilities. Uh, the class itself is, you know, two to three days depending on the different topics that you need to know. Um, so there's only so much that we were able to do in half an hour. Um, but if it is something that interests you, we do have more in-depth training around the factory design utilities. Um, we have an out-of-the-box course from our training catalog um, that if you're interested in learning more, um, we can definitely set up those classes offline for you and, and help you get the additional training and learning that you need. Um, in addition, as Nigel had mentioned earlier, last week we did a deeper dive into the industry collections. And as Nigel mentioned, one of the reasons we wanted to cover this today is that you know if you purchase the industry collection starting August 1st, um, you're going to have access to these factory design utilities. Um, so it's important for you to understand you know, what they are, um, some of the different types of capabilities that you gain by having those factory design utilities. Um, and so if you look at, you know, if you want more information about what the industry collections are, um, how they're going to be sold and so forth, again, you can look at last week's uh, presentation and get more details on that. Um, and so at this time, I'd like to go ahead and turn the time back over to Nigel, uh, who will conduct our Q&A session. All right, thank you, Nathan. Um, let's get this camera back up real quick. Um, so we have a couple of questions, uh, the first being from James. Uh, James asked, so in creating that custom robotic station block, um, are, we be, are we able to select or create our own attributes, uh, for example, number of stations, design of the actual footprint, uh, as well as others? Uh, yeah, so, so I actually created that asset myself, and, um, you know, I actually made that a part, and um, basically, inside of your parameter section, inside of Inventor, uh, you can control, and, and I did forget to show that. Um, in fact, maybe I'll show that real quick. Um, here, let me pull up Inventor real fast. So when I have the model, let me find my cursor here. Uh, when I have that model of my storage bin, if I look at my parameters right here inside of Inventor, uh, the one thing I forgot to point out is notice that we have this key column right here. You know, I can create custom parameters or I can use the parameters that Inventor creates out of the box. And I can choose which ones I want available by checking this key parameters. So this is really how I control what a user would see or not see when they're placing my asset. So, so you absolutely do have control over what they can or cannot manipulate. Um, you can also combine it with iLogic rules if you're familiar with that. Uh, we've done webcasts on iLogic in the past. Uh, you can also combine it with iLogic rules uh, to make it even more powerful. So there's a really a whole lot of capabilities that we can build into our factory assets. Definitely. Um, and then Rick asks, just uh, simply clash detection? Question mark. Um, absolutely. So the one part I did not get into 
uh, because we just didn't have time. Um, inside of Inventor, and, and again, let me go back here real quick. Um, if I go back to my factory design assembly here, notice that I also have this sync with Navisworks. Um, I just didn't have time to show that, but I, but I did want to. When I sync with Navisworks, I can actually combine multiple models together. I can combine building models, inventor models. You know, if I had my factory created and uh, it was so big, I wanted to lay it out in four or five different sections and combine them together, I can do that in Navisworks. And Navisworks has some very powerful clash detection tools that will very quickly analyze everything and let you know where those clashes are. Um, and that is part of the factory design utilities. So all of that is included if you have the factory design suite today or if when the collections come out, you get the collection with the factory design utilities. Correct, yeah, and Navisworks manages in that collection. Um, if you wanted to see that, like, like Nathan said, um, you can go ahead and take a look at our uh, webcast from last week. Um, that has all of the information there. Um, as we do get more information about those uh, industry collections, we will give them out to you. Um, and Fred asks a question, um, are these asset blocks any different than simplified parts with iMates? Can I use heavy inventor assemblies in factory design and also be fast? So you want these, you know, when you're talking about a factory, the scale is a whole lot larger. So really the key is you want to reduce the detail as much as possible. Um, in fact, in Factory Design C 2017, um, they added some capabilities to uh, even simplify assets further so that uh, you can have more facet type representation versus full representations. Um, it's really up to you. Obviously, the more detailed the information is, the more it's going to affect performance. So, um, so it's really up to you. Now, that being said, you can create assets with assemblies or parts. So you do have the option with both. If you want an assembly as part of a factory asset, that's no problem. We completely support that. Um, you can also take an assembly and you can simplify it to a single part if you want. Um, that's actually what I did with this, this uh, welding station right here. I, I took that as an assembly and saved it out as a part and then modified the part to behave the way that I wanted it to. But I could have also made that an assembly if I wanted to as well. Um, again, it's just how do you want the performance to be affected, you know, how powerful is your hardware, how powerful are the capabilities that you have. Definitely. Um, and uh, with that, I think we're good with questions, unless uh, some last minute ones come in here. Um, Nathan, if you could just uh, jump to the next slide. Sorry, let no me worries. go back here. So uh, like I say every week, uh, make sure you do stay connected with Kativ. Um, this isn't just for us to give you, you know, random marketing information, um, but to give you all relevant information on things like you know, these AVAs, um, we do have, you know, special webcasts that might not necessarily be AVAs as well that do have um, some teaching information on stuff. Uh, for example, tomorrow we're having one on uh, Nash and NCAD. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and let me know um, via the, uh, the chat here or in the uh, after webinar survey that you do get. I'll definitely get you an invite out to that. Um, all of the recordings, as usual, can be found on YouTube the day of or the day after any of our webcasts. So uh, if you did miss, you know, a couple of minutes here or there, um, I know you're all busy in the mornings, um, as we are as well. Um, so yeah, if you did miss any of it, go ahead and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll find all that information there. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to thank you, Nathan, for being here today. Thank you. Um, and uh, I guess that's it for today. We'll see you all next week um, for the... Uh, Autodesk desktop application. So uh, those of you who uh, might have gotten some notifications that say update your desktop application manager, um, we're going to teach you all of the new capabilities of the new app. And uh, really awesome stuff. So we'll see you later. Thank you, everyone.